Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love online, and we are about to start our message, which starts with Judges chapter 7, followed by, you know what, Pat's Two Cents. All right, Judges chapter 7, starting at verse 1. Then Jerubbabel, <clears throat> who was Gideon, and all the people that were with him rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Moray in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest is Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. Now, therefore, go to, proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand. Can you imagine twenty two thousand went home? That's how many were with him? Wow. And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it will be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go with thee. So he brought down the people unto the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Every one that lappeth of the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set by himself over there. Likewise, every one that boweth down upon his knees to drink. And the number of them that lappeth, putting their hand to their mouth, were three hundred men. But all of the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. <clears throat> and the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lappeth will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thine hand, and let all the other people go every man unto his place. Wow. Now I'm going to stop there. I want you to hear this. I'm going to read this one sentence again. This is very, this is a key point. A lot of us wonder, why is the field so white, yet the labor is so few? And this is what God says, addressing that in ways that we don't really look at too often. He said, everyone that boweth down upon his knees to drink. That's what everybody else did. The 300 pulled the water up to their mouth, cupped it and lapped it like a dog. But those that bowed their knee, you know where I'm going with this. They bowed their knee. When you bow your knee to anything, it's a worship position. Many people worship their appetites. Many people worship the desires of their flesh. Many people worship their longings, their lusts. They worship the, the, the things that appeal to, to their human nature. And they're so given to their lust. They're so given to their appetites. They're not given to the ways of God in that same manner, to the same degree. So with God, see, when you scoop up water, when you scoop it up, your head is up, your eyes are looking around, you're watchful. You're not just caught up in the water. When you get on your knee, and you bow and your face is buried in that water, sucking it up, you're not paying attention to what's going on around you. 
Think about the, the posture of that. You are so caught up in satisfying your thirst. You're not taking the time to look around. Somebody could walk up to you and chop your neck off. You wouldn't know it. It would be over by the time you realize what happened because you're so buried in that water, sucking it up. You're given to your appetites. You're given to your human nature. You're given to your flesh. You're given to your lust, your longings, your desires, your your your, your delicacy, so to speak. And you're so caught up in it that God could be speaking to you. God could be tapping you on your shoulder. You never know it because you're so caught up in what you're feeling physically. You're so caught up in the sensual side of your life. And I'm not referring to sexual, sensual. That's all of our senses, the sensual side of your life that you're not given to the spirit man at all. And oftentimes what's happening in your natural man can dull your senses to what God wants to do in your spirit man. When they teach FBI agents, CIAs and all these special ops guys, when they teach them strategies and, and how, to, how to be aware of their surroundings, they're not caught up in their appetites. They have to suffer with hunger. They have to suffer fatigue and press through. And when they, when they tire them out, they'll put them in a stressful situation where they have to think on their, on their feet. And they walk in a room with all these mannequins and these, these, uh, these pop-up things in the room. And they have to discern, is it the little grandma pushing the baby in the carriage? Is, is a machine gun going to pop out of that? Is the little girl carrying a, a, a suicide bomb? Is, is, is the man uh, looking like he's on the phone? Is he getting ready to push a button and explode everything? Which is the one? And it may be 25 of them in the room. They have to go in and immediately assess the situation and determine who are the victims and who are the perpetrators? Who are the, the danger? Uh, the ones that are who, that pose danger, and they have to determine that, and they have to get down and get to shooting. And many times in their training, they and even in real life, they make a mistake and shoot the one that's more typical to them, and the one that was really the danger. Boom! They have some little loud noise or some flash. And they realize that that they they failed the test and they really killed some innocent people because they didn't assess the situation correctly. So then the teacher teaches them. Now, when you go in, what wasn't right? You have to look and see what doesn't add up. You have to always say to yourself, what's not right about this picture? And they're teaching them to observe. If a lady's pushing a baby carriage, why is this not happening? If a man is talking on the phone, why is the phone not lit? Or why is there are certain things that don't line up with, with the picture? So you have to make a quick assessment. You have to be that quick on your feet. Well, what God is saying is in that particular example of them bowing the knee to their appetite, you can't be aware of anything going on up there if you're caught up with what's happening right here, what's going in my mouth. I'm thirsty. I'm hot. Period. It stops there. Where the ones who are lapping it with their tongue, they're looking around. They can see if the enemy tries to sneak up on them. That water will go down and they'll get in position to fight. God needs people. If you're asking God to use you, God needs people who are not given to their appetites. God needs people who know how to deny themselves 
when the nitty gritty hits the fan. God is looking for people who are willing to lay aside a lot of their own pleasures because they see the import of what's going on. They see the urgency of the, the times we're living in. They see the urgency in the spirit realm. They see the strategy of the enemy. I'm going to share a dream with you in a minute too that the Lord gave me last night. Now, we, especially if we haven't been disciplined as children to the point where we should have been, I always felt like I should have been disciplined a lot more, but we won't go into that. Uh, I believe I would have been a lot further along in my life if I had had more discipline. But the bottom line is, a lot of times the lack of discipline as a child makes it that much harder to deny oneself as an adult because you never had to deny yourself. You never had to stay in, clean the house, do the dishes, do the laundry, help mama with this, help mama with that. When the kids are saying, come on outside and play. No, 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 you got work to do. I was always allowed to play. I appreciate that because I did have my childhood, but it did limit me in my areas of discipline. Now, Spiritually speaking, some areas I can say as far as denying some things, I'm good at denying some things, but other things, well, pray for me, y'all. So my point is sometimes even when I wonder why God doesn't use me more, why God doesn't open up more doors for me, Sometimes I wonder if it's because of my lack of discipline. So we have to always reassess ourselves and say, Lord, what is lacking in me that limits your ability to use me? What is lacking? And we have to come to that, acknowledge it, ask God to help us and get to work at where we're falling short the most in spiritual discipline. You hear what I'm saying? So this is a time for reflection. Ask God to show you to you. Ask God to show you where you're doing well and ask God to show you where you're falling short. And that will help you progress better because a lot of times we're so busy looking at where everybody else falls short, where everybody else disappoints us, where everybody else is not meeting the mark. And we're so busy looking out, we forget to look in. But then when it comes to our appetites, we get so caught up in that, we forget to look, period because every bit of our energy is focused on what my flesh wants right now, my satisfaction right now, my gratification right now, instant gratification. Give me, give me, give me, my name is Jimmy. Hey, fork it up, fork it up, baby. I want to eat, I want to feel, I want the sensation, yes. You know, we, we, we get so caught up. On, I, I used to watch people when they watch TV. You talk about undivided attention. You could say, you know, the house is on fire. They wouldn't hear you. They are like, Ooh. I mean, their mouth is open. Their eyes are buckshot open. I mean, they're, they're peeled. They're, they're glued to their tube. And the attention that the TV can pull on people really blows me away. It's not that deep to me. I can get up, walk away from it, turn it off. Okay, I'll, I'll figure out what happened tomorrow. And if I don't find out, not the end of the world. But 
Some people is like, shh, shh, shh. okay, this is family time, but we can't talk because your movie's on. Okay. So that's what I'm talking about, giving to appetites. We, we give it all, whatever we're into, whatever we're enjoying, we give it all. We don't have time. For someone to call us with an emergency. We don't have time for someone to ask us a question. We're not willing to turn that off and go minister to somebody. I'll get to you in two hours. I'm doing something right now. Yeah, well, that person may commit suicide by the time you get to enjoy in your movie. But because you were so caught up in the movie, you didn't hear the Spirit of God telling you, turn that off and call so-and-so now or drive to their house now because we're caught up. We're bending the knee and we're sucking up their water. We're sucking up our appetites. We're gratifying our flesh. Yes, 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 yes. Ah. <sighs> Okay, Lord, I'll get to you in a minute. Yes, yes, yes. Lord, what? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we don't realize how we lay God aside. I've been guilty of it too. I'm not talking to y'all like I like I make I meet the mark all the time because I don't. There are times I don't feel like doing the spiritual stuff. I don't feel like being there on Saturday. I want to go to the pool. I want to go sit up in the movie and eat some greasy popcorn. I want to go uh, take a drive down to the beach and kick it and relax. Do my thing. There's a lot of things I could do. I could be up there playing racquetball, shooting pool. I could be doing a lot of things I like to do. Go visiting folks. And there are times when I just don't feel like preaching. I don't feel like singing. I don't feel like whatever. And unless grandma forgot or oversleep, I'm or overslept. I'm here. I'm here, whether I feel like it or whether I don't. I wish I was better at that in praying. Yeah, that's where I fall short in my prayer time. I fall short in my reading the Bible. I fall short there too. I can spend a lot more time with God than I do. So I'm not bragging on myself. See, there's one side I do okay. There's another side I plop right on my face. And then I get frustrated because God doesn't use me more. Well, maybe I don't deserve to be used more. See, a lot of times we think that we are sacrificing so much and we're not. We're really not. It's a very comfortable living. But you know, you know, when we're bent on our flesh, it's harder. It's always harder. So whatever you do, ask God to help you live in the spirit. Ask God to help you Find the things of God more important, more urgent than your own thing. It's your thing. Do what you want to do. I can't tell you nee, 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 who to sock it to. Now, we can live that way if we want. It's my thing. It's my life. It's my business. My business. You mind your business. I do my business. Yeah, well, you know what? Unless your business is God's business... You remember what Jesus said? He said, I was about my father's business. What are you about? What are you about? What is most of your time spent doing? Hmm? There's no harm in enjoying your life, of course. God put us here to have an abundant life. But the most gratifying thing to do, which most of us don't even get, is serving God. He rewards you with inner gratification, inner satisfaction. He rewards you with that. 
He's not, he doesn't want your life to be one big arduous task. No. He wants you to enjoy your life. But don't forget him either. Don't forget the things of God. Don't forget the people that need you to minister God to them. As Jesus said, do this, but don't leave the other undone. Well, <clears throat> anyway, let me read on and then I'll finish. And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were 300 men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the 300 men that lappeth, will I save you and deliver the Midianites into thine hand. And let all the other people go, every man unto his own place. Hmm. So the people took vittles vittles and their hand and their hand and their trumpets and he sent all the rest of Israel every man unto his tent sent them home and retained those 300 men and the host of Midian were beneath him in the valley and it took the and it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him arise get thee down unto the host for I have delivered into thine hand. Hmm. And if thou fear to go down, and God doesn't uh, uh, punish us for having fear, if thou fear to go down, hmm, go thou with pure thy servant down to the host, and thou shalt hear what they say, and afterwards thine hand be strengthened to go down into the host. Then went he down with Pura his servant unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host. And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along in the valley like grasshoppers for multitude. That's how many there were. It looked like a swarm, like a, you know, a locust, okay. And their camels were without number as the sands by the seaside for multitude. And when Gideon would come, Behold, there was a man that told a dream into his fellow. See, that's what I like about God. When he calls you, when he sends you, when he equips you and, and, and gets you ready, he knows there's that element of fear we have to battle. So what did he do? He gives a man a dream and makes sure he's the one that tells it while Gideon is within ear reach to strengthen his faith. And he says, I dreamed a dream, and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian and came unto the tent and smote it that it fell and overturned it that the tent lay along. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else save the word of Gideon, the son of Joash, and men of Israel, for unto his hand hath God delivered Midian and all the hosts. Now right there, he's got his confirmation. Yes. God's going to whoop some tail and you're going to be the one to, to win the victory. So you have no need to fear. Check that out. Now, I love that about God because who he calls, he equips. Mm -hmm. Who he equips, he strengthens. Now, listen to this. Um, I want to go to verse 18 for the sake of time. When I blow with the trumpet, this is Gideon talking, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of all the camp and say, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. So Gideon and the hundred men, listen to this, that were with him, came unto the house of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch. And they had but newly set the watch and they blew the trumpets and break the pitchers that were in their hands. And the three companies blew the trumpets and break the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands to blow with all. And they cried, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And they stood every man in his place round about the camp. And all the host ran and cried and fled. Listen, that's another key verse right there. And they stood every man in his place 
That is one of the key problems in the churches today. The reason we're not so effective in these last days is because everybody wants to stand in somebody else's place. They want to do what somebody else is doing. They don't want to do what God called them to do. Hmm. And unfortunately, they don't. It's different if you don't want to do it, but you obey anyway. But the ones that don't want to and don't, that's a sad situation right there. So, number one, uh, uh, the number one point is don't be so caught up in your appetites. Focus on God and keep your eyes open. Watch and pray. Don't just pray, 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 pray. No, watch and pray. Be aware of your surroundings at all times, even in your daily life. Number two, which I failed to mention before, make sure that you do what you're told. When you're in a battalion, when you're in a group, when you're in a um, uh, the the when you're on the SWAT team, the firemen, whatever the case may be, you're handling a disaster, a tragedy, a crisis. You're handling a dangerous situation. Learn to obey. Don't always think that you know better than the person that's above you. Submit. Learn to obey. That's not a cuss word, y'all. Some lives have, many lives have been saved through obedience. And many lives have been lost through disobedience. That man or woman is not over you or in authority. Just because they know how to dress. There's something they know that you don't. Learn. Learn. Don't be afraid to learn. Stay in your lane. Stay in your place. Stay within your calling. Don't try to branch out and do stuff God didn't call you to do. Don't waste God's time. And don't bother wasting your own. See, a lot of times we get caught up in our pride and we feel like, well, if God can use them that way, why can't he use me? Well, because you ain't them. Mm, mm, mm. Anyway, they won the battle. That's the bottom line. My question is, will you win yours? Will you win your battles? Or will you constantly lose because you're caught up in your appetite? Will the Lord be able to use you? Are you watching and praying? Are you, oh, Lord, 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 my name is Jimmy. And I want you to give me, give me, give me, give me, Lord. My name is Jimmy. Give me, give me, give me, Lord. Oh, give me, give me. I want this. I want that. I want that. I want that. I want you to do this for me. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Eyes are squeezed shut. You're caught up in what you want, 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 want. Feed me, feed me. Or is it, Lord, what do you want me to do for you? Does that ever come out of your mouth? Do you ever sit and be still and listen for God to lead you to Scripture, for God to speak in your spirit, for God to bring things to your mind? That's the part we fail, we fall short in the most, is shutting the lip and listening to see what he's got to say to us. We're always giving him our request. Make your request known unto the Lord. Come boldly unto the throne of grace. Yeah, but sometimes we forget to say, Lord, what is your request? What do you request of me? The best leaders are the ones that were, number one, the best followers and the best listeners. Hmm. There'll be times when God calls you to serve him. He'll call you to encourage somebody down the street. When you're at your lowest ebb, 
You're so discouraged. You feel like your life is falling apart. You're wondering, is God paying you any attention? But he wants you to go minister to them, and he's not handling your situation. And you're at your wit's end. But God says, you go minister to them. There's something about that that we don't get. But the principle is, when you water others, you water yourself. As you begin to talk to them and encourage them, you find out what's coming out of your mouth is boomeranging back to you and is witnessing in your spirit and say, oh, oh, thank you, Lord. And they don't know it, but you're feeding yourself while you're blessing them. But you got to have an ear to hear. Okay. I think I have said as, about as much as I can say right now unless the Lord lays something else later, this is the message. I hope it blessed you. I hope it opened your eyes to some things. And I hope it makes you aware of the necessity of awareness, how much more we need to be aware, how much more we need to be in tune with God's spirit rather than our flesh. Hmm. So get up off your knees and and be one of God's servants. When you bow, you bow to God, not to your appetite. Amen. Amen.